I presume you already know about the FTX debacle, so I'm not gonna go over that here. FTX, one of the largest and highly regarded cryptocurrency exchanges, has filed for bankruptcy protection and is alleged to have between one and two billion in client money unaccounted for. What happened and how did it all go wrong for Sam Bankman Freed? Please indulge me for a few minutes. Although I'm not an authority on cryptocurrency by any means, I am an experienced CPA with 20 plus years of experience, so I know a thing or two. Allow me to apply my lens as an accountant to this whole FTX debacle and what we can learn from it and what it means for you and crypto exchanges going forward. Hi, I'm Noel Lorenzana, your friendly neighborhood accountant. Okay, so what did FTX and Sam Bankman Freed do that was so egregious from an accounting point of view, in my opinion? This is alleged since I'm not privy to their financial records, but this information is curated from highly regarded sources and insiders, so take it under advisement. Number one, recording illiquid crypto coins on the balance sheet. Liquidity in cryptocurrency means the ease with which a tradable crypto coin can be converted into cash or other assets without affecting the market price. I would argue that Bitcoin and Ethereum are the most liquid and all others are illiquid or not very liquid. Let's look at a copy of FTX's financial statement balance sheet dated November 10th, which was obtained by Financial Times. SBF clearly knows the liquidity distinction since under assets he has three columns, liquid, less liquid, and illiquid. Let's look at the top five liquid assets. We have Robinhood stock, US dollars, US Bancorp stock, DAI, which is a stable coin, and Polkadot, which is a blockchain technology company. The first three are stock investments in cash. These are fine and I don't have a problem with them. With DAI, a stable coin, knowing what we know now with the Luna stable coin, TerraUSD, crashing to zero essentially, are stable coins really stable? Hmm. Going down the rest of the column are other crypto coins and stable coins, which by their very nature may not be very liquid in my opinion. Conservatively, these maybe should be moved over to the less liquid column and an allowance for lack of liquidity should be factored in. And these aren't insignificant values. Adding up the crypto coins from DAI on downward, we have 154 and a half million in liquid assets according to SBF's spreadsheet. But let me ask you this, do you think dumping $28 million worth of DAI or Polkadot coins would affect the price? If so, by how much? Hmm. Let's go over to the less liquid column. We can see that the FTT token dropped in one week from 5.9 billion to 553 million. Solana dropped from 2.2 billion to 981 million. This is a one week difference and the actual figures now are a lot lower. It also shows 2.2 billion in the serum token, which is nearly worthless and has a fully diluted market cap of around 2.7 billion. This is highly irregular, which leads me to number two, bad accounting leads to unreliable financial statements. Financial statements are important to investors and lenders because it provides tons of information on whether or not a company is profitable and how well it's capitalized and a snapshot into what the company owns and what they owe. If an outside investor or lender wants to know about the financial health of a company, they will first look at a company's financial statements, typically the balance sheet and the profit and loss statement. I've got a great video, which I'll link up here about the importance of the balance sheet. Okay, allegedly the way companies like FTX were able to get loans and outside investments was to show their strong balance sheet with billions of dollars in assets to dupe third parties into investing millions and billions of dollars. Maybe they would even offer some of these illiquid tokens as collateral on the money borrowed. So what's the solution here? There's currently no clear accounting guidance from what I've read and no audit rules for crypto assets yet. So basically it's the wild west for the unregulated crypto exchanges like FTX and others. FTX is privately held so it doesn't have to share its financial statements with the public or undergo regular financial audits. According to its website, it says FTX has successfully undergone a US GAAP financial audit for 2021 
and plans to continue undergoing regular audits. From my CPA point of view, this means absolutely nothing. So they had a US financial audit for 2021. Okay, what were the results of the audit? Did they receive a clean or unqualified audit opinion or something else like an adverse opinion? Were their financial statements fairly stated or not? Just because someone says they have audited financial statements, it doesn't automatically mean that their books are in good order. It just means that they hired a firm to conduct an audit. The results of the audit is a completely different story. Just know there's a difference. Let's talk about who was the CPA or accounting firm who conducted the audit. According to a Forbes article, FTX's fiscal year 2021 financial audits of FTX and FTX.us were performed by either or both Prager Metis CPAs and Armanino LLP. Some like Meet Kevin are attacking the accounting firms for negligence, but without being able to see the results of their financial audit, you have no way of knowing what the auditors actually thought of their financial statements, like whether or not they were fairly stated. In addition, the footnotes of the financial statements oftentimes clarify or highlight any uncertain positions. For all you know, the FTX risks, disclosures, and auditor's opinion may have been properly identified by the auditors. But since the audit findings aren't public, we'll likely never know. Going back to the FTX balance sheet, we can see that the company only had 900 million of liquid assets, and that figure is debatable against 9 billion of liabilities. Proof of reserve audits sound great, but if there's no transparency on the rest of the financials, then a crypto exchange can be insolvent for all you know. Number three, crypto exchanges need to be regulated. All right, no one wants to be regulated, I get that. Cryptos by definition are DeFi or decentralized financial instruments. But in order to instill faith in these crypto exchanges, Regulations and government oversight is badly needed. You can disagree with that all you want, but regulations are coming and they'll likely come fast. They'll probably start with a congressional hearing and take it from there. Sam Bankman Freed was a go-to resource for lawmakers in Congress for writing rules for cryptocurrencies. Now that's some irony for you. SBF also was a mega donor helping bankroll Democrats in the recent elections. Due to the recent bankruptcy filings for FTX, Sam Bankman frieds influence in Washington has likely vanished along with his billions in personal wealth. Millions or billions of investor coins have vanished and now state and federal regulators are investigating the exchange. Shark Tank's Kevin O'Leary has publicly stated that he got burned with FTX, he's learned his lesson, and that he and many others won't invest another dollar until there are regulations put in place. What does this mean for other exchanges? If you have money in a non-regulated exchange, I would immediately move your funds to a private wallet or convert it back to good old fiat, the US dollar that is. I'm not sure which exchanges are regulated at this point. I do know that Coinbase is publicly traded with audited financial statements available to the public. They're US based and they say they won't lend out your crypto coins without your consent. But I'm not endorsing Coinbase by any means. Do your own due diligence. Number four, lack of transparency and lending crypto without consent. FTX is a private company and as such, their financial information is private as well. They're not required to disclose their financial statements so the company can be insolvent and you would never know. They may have been a favorite exchange among the crypto enthusiasts because of their low trading fees and useful features for traders, but what else was there? Strong public opinion of the company, the amount of venture capital raised, influence with lawmakers, They spent massively to market FTX as a trustworthy investment platform. The company paid $135 million for the naming rights to the Miami Heat Arena. They signed a deal with Major League Baseball to affix its logo to umpires' uniforms. They added pop culture star power by recruiting football legend Tom Brady with wife Giselle as spokespeople and airing a Super Bowl ad featuring comedian Larry David. They also partnered with many YouTube personalities to promote their business. Besides all of that, without transparency, how can you have faith in a crypto exchange that isn't transparent with their financial information? They've also been alleged to have lent or loaned customer assets or crypto coins without their customer's consent. According to an article by Seeking Alpha, the downfall of FTX stemmed from the cryptocurrency exchange lending billions of dollars worth of customer funds to back risky bets by its sister company, Alameda Research. 
This is just plain wrong and flat out fraud. You shouldn't be able to ever loan out a customer's property without their consent. This is theft and SBF should be held accountable for this. Which leads me to my final observation. Number five, related party transactions not disclosed. This is complicated and if I'm being honest, I can barely wrap my brain around all of the FTX related party transactions. Let's see, there's FTX.com or FTX International, which is their global trading platform. You have FTX US, which is their US trading partner. You have Alameda Research, which is SBF's trading company, where he recently transferred or lent 10 billion of customer funds. Sam Bankman Fried confessed that Alameda's aggressive trading strategy was funded by money customers had deposited in FTX for their own trading. This is so wrong and is essentially fraud. If this was properly disclosed, I don't think any trader would have invested any money with FTX. In accounting, related party transactions should be disclosed in the footnotes of the financial statements. Clearly, there were no disclosures whatsoever given to investors. This is all a mess and will take years to unwind. You can think of it as an Enron moment for cryptocurrencies. So where do we go from here? There isn't enough information to say whether or not the outside auditors did anything wrong. Yes, they did conduct a financial audit in 2021, but we have no idea what the audit opinion letter said and have no idea about the footnote disclosures. At this point, if you have any money in a crypto exchange, just be aware of the added risks that FTX and other blowups this year have highlighted for us. As precious metal investors like to say, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. This refers to counterparty risk or the possibility that the other party may not fulfill it's part of the deal. If you own crypto, maybe move it to a private off-ledger wallet until regulation kicks in. And trust me, it's coming sooner than you think. If you lost money in crypto this year, there are some strategies that you can use to offset that against your taxes. Check out this video over here for all the details. What do you think about the FTX debacle? How do you feel about crypto exchanges? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.